Hey class, this is Roger Palomino here. So uh, today we're going to talk about essential functions that are necessary to know. This is going to be a two-parter because there's a whole bunch that I can't cover right now. So let's get right into it. So the first function that we're going to talk about are linear functions. So they're called linear functions because the graph of the function is a line. I'm pretty certain you can tell by the name linear function means a line. So what's interesting is back in algebra, when you first learn about the slope formula, or they call it the slope intercept form. So using this concept of the slope intercept form, you were taught that it's y equals mx plus b, but in reality, in reality, this is actually a function. So you can rewrite this as y equals f of x, when in reality, it's just mx plus b. You weren't shown this in the beginning because a lot of you might have not understood what a function was at the time. But when you think about this, this is the exact format of how I explained what a function was the first time in my other, in my review. Because this is your input, this is the machine, and this is what's, this is what's spat out. But in reality, this is just the general form. In reality, it would just be y equals mx plus b, which is whatever that function is, and then you just, whatever your result is, when you plug it in, that's your output. But this is how it looks generally. Uh, this is like the physical form. So the example I'll give you would be, let's say y equals x plus one, and you were told to graph it. Visually, it looks like this. Here's zero, here's your x, and here's your y, right? One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. All right. So with this function, it's going to look like this, like a linear line like this. It's just y equals x plus one. So it's a linear line, it's a linear function. This is a linear function because it's a straight line. So hence the name, a linear function. But there are a whole slew of other functions that we can go over right now, which are, let's say we have, we're gonna talk about now a polynomial. So what is a polynomial? Some of you might know what it is. Some of you might have heard in the name before. Well, what a polynomial is, so let's see, a polynomial, a polynomial, so this is, a, this is considered a function. I know you've seen this before in your algebra course, but this is actually a function. Now, this is a series that I'm writing right here, but it's going to make sense as soon as I explain what this this thing looks like right now. So hold on, give me one second. Okay, so okay. So let me explain real briefly what this means. So a polynomial looks of the form where you have multiple polynomials like you have multiple terms, but they are grouped in a series like this. So we have a to n, a, sorry, a n x to the n plus a n minus one x to the n minus one plus so on, a two x squared plus a one x plus a naught. So what this is saying is that n is a non-negative integer. Non-negative means it has to be positive in this scenario, it has to be positive. And it has to be positive. And the numbers 
A1, sorry, A0, A1, A2, dot, 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 so on. A n are constants, constants, we'll continue over here, they are constants, constants called coefficients of of the polynomial. So now all this is just saying is this. All this is just saying is that every single a n, a n minus one, and so on, all the way down to a naught, all of these are just numbers. They're nothing, nothing special. That's what they're called constants. Numbers in math are called constants, but for a polynomial, we call them coefficients. So this way we don't just say oh, that's a constant, this is a constant, this is a constant. But when we're trying to just identify which is a constant of which polynomial, we say the coefficient of this polynomial here, so we don't confuse the term, that's why we say coefficient in front of the variable. That's what's called, the, the number in front of a variable like this is called a coefficient. This by itself is called a constant. Without the variable, it's just called a constant. So, so understand you see that this is a polynomial. So let's give you a, a physical example of what a polynomial is. P of x would be equal to, let's write it over here, 2x to the 6 minus x to the 4 plus 2 over 5, x to the 3rd plus root 2. So we see this polynomial here, right? This polynomial here, you, know, you notice that it has a minus, it has a 2 third, 2 over 5, it has a root. So you see it could look a polynomial doesn't always have to be positive, positive, positive. The numbers look easy. It could be a mess, like this. And that's okay. Not every, not every polynomial is still going to be perfect. By the way, I have to explain something real briefly about degree. So degree is this, the little number in the exponent right here. Only we talk about degrees when we're talking about polynomials. Any other time we're talking about the exponent, it's going to be about the exponent or maybe a power series or whatever have you, but it depends on the situation. So for this particular situation, we talk about the degree of a polynomial. So now what, what is the degree? The degree is the number that's in the first, in the first term here that is, the most, that is the most out of all polynomials here. Of all the x's here, this is the most potent. That's why this polynomial, if you were to grade it, it's degree six. This is degree four, this is degree three, and this doesn't have a degree. Well, it's degree zero, but we don't even talk about it since we don't put it down because this is a constant. So understand that degree just notifies how powerful each term is, and you have to reorder it in such a way from highest to lowest. That's why the highest is in front and you go down to the lowest until you have nothing left. That's why it looks like this. Now, I can't graph this because x to the 6 is ridiculously hard to graph, especially with all these other things here. So if you want, you know, for homework, if you want, you could go use Maple or some sort of math software, graph this to me and, and send it to me somewhere on Instagram or on Snapchat. <laughs> so now, let's talk about quadratic. Because, because polynomials are not, are not always, like I said, they're always not always going to be this crazy, some, but sometimes they are. But there are some situations where when we have degree 2, right, that's what I'm just writing shorthand, D is for degree, we're talking about quadratics, quadratic equations, so... Let's see, what am I talking about? A polynomial of degree two, which is what I wrote up there, it's fine, is of the form P 
of x is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. So it is called a quadratic function, right? So the physical example is y equals x squared plus x plus 1, and it looks something like this. x, y, 0, and we shoot it up like this. It looks similar to what we've known as a, as, oh, excuse me, <laughs> as a parabola. So understand that this function, what makes this one different is because it's easier to graph because it's x to the square, not x to the 6. We're going to get to further understanding what does it mean when we have higher powers of polynomials of degree, so on. I'm not sure which degree, but the point that I'm saying is that a polynomial degree 2 looks like this format, where it doesn't have this long part. It just goes from x to square, x, and then, then you're constant. Now, what's interesting is, let's say I gave you another, uh, let me give you another quadratic, right? If you remember in pre-calculus, right, you were taught that if you had a negative sign in front of the variable, right, of your quadratic, if you had a negative sign, right, what, it, what in essence what it does is it actually flips, it actually flips the parabola upside down. It doesn't make a U shape or I like some people like to say it's a it's a smile and you went you now you made a frown and that's why and it makes sense that concept makes sense because it's negative you're gonna be sad so you make a frown versus if you're positive you're happy you make a nice smile so that's one way to think about it that way when you try to remember that when you have a negative it almost flips the function upside down or it does it or it does a reflection depending on what your function is. So this is not true for all functions that they're just going to flip, no. It depends on what the function, how the behavior of the function is. And again, that's pre-calculus, that's what this is review. Now, let's have, let's talk about cubic. So now a polynomial of degree three is called a cubic function now what does it look like well it's similar to what we just did it's very similar to what we just did so p of x is ax to the third plus bx squared plus cx plus d. So this physical example I'll give you here. Only difference from the quadratic and the cubic is that we have ax to the third. We have one more variable. If anything, if you were to block out the a, right, this would be a polynomial. This is sorry, not polynomial. It is a polynomial, it's just degree two. It's a parabola here, or quadratic. This looks like a quadratic here. Now, now here's the thing. This example here, x to the third minus x plus one, this doesn't have an x squared. This is still a polynomial, just a cubic. So visually, how does it look visually, right? Let's see what does it look like visually. So, visually, let's see, y equals x to the third minus, right, minus x plus 1. It looks something like that. Again, these are not drawn, drawn to scale, but the point that you're, the point that you notice, it looks like a, a an s or a, like a slope, like how you normally see in business, you see how like they're always saying, oh, look at this margin, it goes up at this point, but yet we lost 
money on this point depends on, like I'll just say stocks, that's much easier, stocks. So it behaves similar to that way and it's continuous. So there are other cases. So let's talk strictly about, let's talk strictly about the form X to the N, depending on what it looks like. And this is called something else. This is, this is something else. So let's see what this thing that I'm talking about. I'm talking about the power function f of x is equal to x to the n, where n is a constant, and there are several cases. There are several cases to remember. When we have y equals x to the 1, so the first case is when we have n equals 1, right? y equals x. At first glance, this is just simply what we call in, in mathematics, we just call this the identity function. It's almost like 1, but the identity function is a remarkable identity because it cuts the axis perfectly right down the middle. And I'm not gonna go too deep into it, but I just know at the moment, it's a very important property that you use to find out if a function has, I believe, inverses, uh, differentiable, a whole bunch of other stuff. Like I said, there's a whole bunch of other things, but we'll get to that. We'll get to that later. That's what it looks like when we have if we let n equal 1, this is what it looks like. So now let's say the case when n equals 2, so y equals x squared, our function looks like this. It's like a parabola. So this is a parabola. This is a parabola. And for n equals 3, what's this case? So it's y equals x to the third. So it's, again, the same cubic. So this is the cubic, this is the parabola. Okay. Now, what happens when we have cases when it's higher than three? Let's say four or five. Let's just see what that looks like. So... Let's see, so when we have x to the 4, right, when n equals 4, y is equal to x to the 4, got some construction going on back there, <laughs> so it looks like this. If you notice, a distinct difference between the two, this U comes up smoother. This is kind of, it strains out first and then it shoots out. If you notice, that's a slight difference there. So now what about Y equals X to the fifth? This function does a similar idea. If you notice, this popped up sooner than this one. This one first had to straighten out first, and then, and then it shot up. So what can we say about the similarities between these two? Well, well I'm going to tell you what we can say about these two right now. What we're going to say is the general shape of 
f of x equals x to the n simply depends on whether n is even or odd. Notice as n increases, the graph of y equals x to the n becomes flatter. or near, sorry, flatter, near zero, and steeper when the absolute value of x is strictly greater than or equal to one. So as what this is saying is, as, as higher powers as we go, as x to the n goes stronger, as n goes higher and higher, the function just becomes steeper and closer to zero, as we notice here. So, so that's the review for today, guys. So I hope this was very helpful. Um, let me know in the comments below. Give us a like, share, or subscribe. If you like how I'm teaching, give a suggestion. And I will see you guys tomorrow for our next lecture, okay? To finish up part two to the essential functions, okay? Take care.